Hi everyone, Shirtlet here. This has been a long overdue request on the part of a few of the channel's viewers. The Gundam Assault Survive Roster Overview, Zeon 0079 edition. If you are coming here from the previous Gundam Assault Survive Roster Overview, you probably need no introduction. But for those not playing the home game, that one is a 2010 PSP Gundam game featuring a huge roster. When I mention a unit's rank, it's generally the game's designated rating of a unit's performance. You can divide the unit roster in the versus mode using that. That's all you'll ever need. Let's get started then. The first one is your usual Zaku 2, the iconic late 70s jobber. This one's for free from the very start and makes for a fairly versatile early game unit. It carries three primaries, a 120mm machine gun, a bazooka and a 175mm cannon. Cracker grenades come with it as well in the secondary slot, while your trusty heat hawk is your companion for melee. The standard Zaku 2 F-Type bears the D rank and its super attack is a badass punch. Doesn't have much range but can do a good amount of damage. It has a commander variant, the Zaku 2 S-Top, featuring better specs and slightly bigger ammo pools. Still a D rank, but a better performing one. The loadout is almost identical to the F-Type, but the secondary slot's grenades got replaced by foot missiles. You can get this one for 32,000 from the store once you beat the second 0079 Zeon stage, the one with Ramba Roll. The super attack is also much flashier, with the machine doing its best to beat the enemy into a pulp. Now you've probably knew this was coming. Commander type Zaku 2, but red. That's right, Char Esnable's custom Zaku 2 S Top is one of the first C rank Zakus you can get. It goes for 49,500 in the store once you do its research plan. You basically get the F Type's loadout, but you get more ammo for every weapon, not most of them like the S Type. One notable thing about it is that the thruster specs on this one are fairly impressive for a unit within its ballpark. Its melee attacks involve both the Heat Hawk and a couple kicks on top of which you get a high damage kick as a super attack. On the note of Zakus popularized by blonde Zeon pilots, the next unit is the D-rank unit that is the Zaku 2 Kai from War in the Pocket. While devoid of grenades, it packs a pair of primaries, the 19mm machine gun and a Sturmfaust, Santa Claus decoy balloons as a secondary and your trusty heat hawk for melee. The super attack for this one is a wide horizontal slice, which operates like a slightly weaker version of the Gundam's beam saber super attack. You can obtain this one for 32,800 once you've obtained the Zaku 2 S type. The beat up helmet variant of the Zaku 2 Kai is here too. It is also a D rank, and you can get this one for 33,200 after you've either used the regular Zaku 2 Kai three times or cleared the war in the pocket stage on the Zeon side. It shares the machine gun primary weapon and the slicing super attack of the standard Zaku 2 Kai. However, you get a way more versatile secondary weapon, i.e. hand grenades, and the second primary weapon becomes the underbarrel grenade launcher. After that, you get six high-mobility Zaku 2s, all of which can sortie exclusively in space. These are all ace pilot variants, belonging to Shin Matsunaga, Black Tri-Stars, Johnny Raiden, Elliot Rem, Robert Gilliam, and Gabby Hazard. Shin Matsunaga gets an MS-06 R1 high-mobility Zaku 2 early type. It carries a Zaku machine gun and a bazooka, with a side of secondary Sturmfaust and a Heat Hawk. This is a D rank that can be unlocked by either clearing the underwater stage on the Zeon side or having used the standard Zaku 2 three times after having beaten the second stage on the Zeon side. Xian's R1 Zaku costs 36,900 in the store and its super attack is a combo which starts with a shoulder charge and continues with a set of kicks. The comedic trio of Mesh, Gaia and Ortega gets the MS-06 R1A, a slight step up from the R1 type. Its loadout differs from Shin Matsunaga's model in a single aspect, its secondary weapon. In place of the Sturmforce, it carries hand grenades around for tossing. Since this is a Black Tri-Stars mobile suit, it has the Jetstream attack as its super attack. What this means is that it leaves a set of two silhouettes behind it, which replicates its actions, and while these silhouettes aren't particularly tangible, their attacks very much are. It's still a D rank. You can get your hands on one for 37,500 after having cleared the underwater stage on Zeon side, or having used the Zaku 2 commander type once you've cleared the second 0079 stage on the Zeon side. The Crimson Lightning, Johnny Raiden, gets a later model of the Zaku 2 high mobility type, the MS-06 R2, another D rank. Alongside the Zaku machine gun in its primary slot, it also carries a 36mm giant bazooka that rig arms use. The Sturmfaust secondary does carry over from Shin Matsunaga's R1, and so does the super attack, which was the shoulder charge and kick combo. Just like the first two high mobility Zakus, one of the ways to unlock it in the store is to clear the C stage on the Zeon side. While the other method involves using Shin Matsunaga's Zaku R1 three times, Johnny's R2 comes at a price of 37,500 in the shop. Starting off the other half of this six Zaku group 
we get Elliott Rems MS06R2P, which is a high mobility Zaku 2 test stack. It is a C rank, sporting a fairly saturated red color scheme, mirroring its Gearing's Greed counterpart. The most distinguishing feature of the R2P is the experimental beam rifle, which in this case is represented by a generic stock model of Mirasa's BR-87A beam rifle. The rest of its loadout is identical to Johnny's R2, Zaku Machine Gun, Giant Bazooka, Sternforst and Heat Hawk. Its super attack is the usual death beam that experimental rifles usually come with. This one can be yours for 40,800 once you get its research plan done. Another C rank of the group is Bobby Gilliam's Blue High Mobility Zaku 2 R2. The price tag for this one is 40300 and shows up in the shop when you finish its research plan. The primaries and melee are shared with Johnny's R2. The secondary weapon is four cracker grenades. As its super attack, however, you get the experimental cracker grenade from the MSX series with a much stronger payload, higher damage and a bigger explosion radius. Gabby Hazard's unit is another high mobility Zaku 2 R2, which also shares its first two primaries in melee with Gilliam and Riddens R2s. The secondary this time around is a flashbang grenade. This one's also unlocked via research plans. It's a C rank and costs 40,300. The super attack of Gabby's Zaku involves the machine throwing its heat hawk like a boomerang and hitting multiple targets at a time. Next up is the Act Zaku, a late war model and a B rank. Another unit that can be acquired via research, costing 89,500. Its loadout and moveset are pretty neat. You get the BR-87A beam rifle off of the Marisai, this time in burst fire flavor, a 280mm bazooka off of the standard Zaku 2 F-Type, and a bullpup machine gun in the primary slots. The melee weapon this time around is a slightly bigger Heat Hawk, which is also the Act Zaku's secondary weapon. That's right, you get to toss axes around. Act Zaku's super attack is called a limiter release, improving the machine performance until the SP gauge runs out. If you are looking for more DACA, there's the Zaku Cannon. It's a decent D-rank mobile suit, which can also be unlocked by getting it researched, and goes for around 33,000 in the store. It carries around three primaries. The Zaku machine gun, the 180mm cannon, a pair of hip-mounted big guns, and a smoke discharger in the secondary slot. You get your own two bare hands for melee combat. Zaku cannon gets a fairly flashy super attack, where it rapid fires all of its backpack mounted weapons, i.e. the cannon and the two big guns. Kukuru's Doan Zaku 2 from MSG episode 15 is here too. Unlike its regular F-Type counterpart, it's a C-rank and comes at the price of 36,400. You have to get the research plan for it done for it to show up in the store though. Doan's custom Zaku doesn't really get a proper weapon, you only get rocks. A fuck ton of them. Primary weapons? Rocks. Flame rocks. Electric rocks. Secondary? Smaller rocks. Melee? Surprisingly not a rock. Though the punches at your disposal will hit like one. As you might have guessed, the super attack is also a rock. You punch a huge boulder into the enemy's general direction. There's Zaku ones as well, three of them in fact, all of which D ranks. This includes the standard MSO 5B alongside the Ramba Row and Black Tristar's custom Zakus. The Zaku one is available in the shop for 30,200 after having completed the second 0079 stage on the Zeon side. It gets the standard Zaku machine gun and Zaku bazooka primaries alongside cracker grenades and a heat hawk. However, it also gets a G3 gas launcher in the third primary slot for your war crime needs. Super attack of the Zaku 1 is a short range melee attack like the Zaku 2 has. Rainbow Roll's custom Zaku 1 is more of the same, only foregoing the gas grenade launcher and having slightly better stats alongside a slightly bigger heat hog and slightly more ammo. You can get it for 31,500 after unlocking it via research. As stated, the loadout stays the same, and the super attack remains the usual Zaku punch. Black Tristar's Zaku 1 shares the loadout of the Rambo Roll Zaku 1, with less grenades, a standard Heat Hawk residing in the melee slot, and with its super attack being the Jet Stream attack, just like with the other Black Tristar's machines. It goes for 31,300 in the store once you have the research plan for it done. Next up is a Zaku with a slightly cooler backpack, the Zaku Mine Layer. It is a D rank unit that specializes in mayhem and shenanigans. Your primaries are assorted explosives going from a hand grenade from MSX to incendiary and EMP mines. You can also drop mines from your backpack via your secondary weapon. The mine layer has punches for melee, but this time around they are somewhat coated in nitroglycerin since each jab that connects causes a small explosion, which is why the game lists it as a bomb punch. Oh, and you get proximity mines with a nuclear payload as a part of your super attack, because why not? The Zaku mine layer comes at a price of 32,800. 
becoming available after free sorties with the standard Zaku 2 after having purchased the Zaku 1. Now for the game's free goofs. The Goof Troop, if you will. The standard MSO7B Goof can be yours for 34,000 once you've cleared the second 0079 stage on the Zeon side. It is a somewhat puny finger machine gun with questionable accuracy as its primary weapon, a heat rod as its secondary, and of course the standard Guff heat sword. The Guff has a combo move as its super attack, making it charge forward, sword in hand, and ending the combo with a heat rod. This one's a D rank. Guff also comes in light blue in the form of the Guff Custom. It's a direct upgrade to the standard Guff, featuring a pointier sword, bigger gun, better stats, and a more lethal heat rod. Hence the game lists it as a C rank. 37,500 is the price of this unit, which can be unlocked by clearing the OF MS Team stage on the Zeon side and owning the original Guff. This game features the Guff's flying cousin as well. The MS07H8, also known as the Guff flight type, also known as I can't believe this is still a D rank, is a unit armed with a Gatling gun and the sword of the Guff custom. Its secondary slot is filled with a hover toggle, which enables flight and hover capabilities for the Guff flight type. This fellow is pretty nimble and can be yours for 37,500 upon getting the research plan for it. Its super attack has the speedy great guff flight towards an enemy, shanking it with its sword. On the note of speedy mobile suits, the machine right under that is the EMS-10 Zuda from MS Igloo. It sports the duo of Zaku machine gun and Zaku bazooka alongside an anti-ship rifle in its three primary slots, while the secondary slot gets a Sturmfrost and it carries the standard Heat Hawk from Malay. The Zuda's super attack mimics the fate of Jean-Luc Duval's unit, which means he will fly forward at max speed all the while falling apart from the strain exerted on the unit, culminating in a large area of effect explosion. Surprisingly, if you survive it, and once the explosion is over, you'll get the whole Zuda back. With a decent loadout and a flashy super attack, you might be wondering why is it a D rank? Well, the answer is simple. If you overdo it with the boosting, it will kill you. Yes, every time the boost gauge runs out, the machine will start consuming its HP instead. You can unlock it by using the DOM twice and it goes for 39,200 in the shop. The MS09B DOM is a bulkier D rank that hovers on the ground, which can be unlocked by beating the Odessa stage, i.e. the third mission on the Xeon side. It costs 38,000 and for your buck you'll get the giant bazooka and a Zaku machine gun as primaries, a chest mounted scattering beam cannon which you can use to burn the enemy's retinas, and a heat saber. The Dom can only sortie on the ground. Its super attack is the jet stream attack, but you could've guessed that much. After that, you get a total of 11 amphibious mobile suits. Why? Xeon engineering, of course. Amphibious mobile suits get a 1.4 times modifiers to their mobility, and the One Year War ones additionally come with a built-in stealth ability, which makes them invisible on radar whenever they don't attack for a while. For obvious reasons, they cannot sortie in space. First one is the MSMO-3 GOG. It's a D-rank with two primary weapons, a pair of Mega Particle Cannons, and a couple of torpedoes. Both of these cannot be fired while moving, which is not particularly ideal. The GOG's secondary slot is taken up by the Freezy Yard, which covers the machine in a red gelatinous layer and makes the GOG temporarily impervious to live rounds. Claws are obviously in the melee slot. The Super Attack lobs the unit forward as it spins in a corkscrew motion, swiping at the enemies in its general direction with its claws. You can get one by clearing the Jabro stage on the Xeon side and buying the now unlocked GOG in the store for 34,700. A higher form of GOG, the MSM-03C High GOG, is the C-rank upgrade to the bulky guy. It comes with a pair of Mega Particle Cannons in its arms and torpedo launchers in its two primary slots. For its secondary, it uses a fully automatic pair of machine cannons, and following its GOG ancestor, the High GOG uses its claws for melee combat. If you want to see the big hand missiles from the AAE War in the Pocket OVA, that's pretty much your super attack, though you do get more machine gun fire alongside it. This one can be unlocked by owning a GOG or clearing the War in the Pocket stage on the Xeon side, and can be bought for 36,900. The MSM-07 Zagok, a later Xeon model, comes with a single primary weapon the arm-mounted beam cannons with the missile launcher in its head being the Zagok's secondary weapon. Close are its melee attack and a rapid fire barrage is the machine's super attack. Using the GOG 5 times is how you'll unlock it and 36,500 is the retail price. It's a C rank. It also comes in red. Sure as noble red that is. It's a full-on upgrade to the Zagok. The primary, secondary and melee is shared with the original model but with some adjustments to their performance. The super attack for this one is the Zagok Punch. 
the sort that made a sizable hole into an unfortunate gem in the original show. You can get this one for 53500 once you've done the research plan for it. The first Zagok variant we get is the Zagok E from War in the Pocket. Unlike the original Zagok, it's a D-rank unit, featuring somewhat similar stats but less missiles and more beam shots. That being said, you still get the standard Zagok loadout of beam cannon, missiles and claws. Even the super attack is the same barrage that the standard Zagok unleashes. If you own the regular Zagok and Shars Commander type Zagok, it should be up for grabs for the price of 36900 Another essential addition to the Site 3 Olympic swimming theme is the Egg Guy, a D-rank unit. At its disposal, the Egg Guy possesses a beam cannon and a missile launcher, both being in the primary weapon slots. Its secondary are the Head Vulcans and the Wacky Fellow flails its arms around whenever melee combat is called for. The super attack for this one unleashes a flurry of projectiles from its free ranged weapons. After having obtained and purchased a Zagok, it becomes available for 34,100 in the store. Of course, the large green Zok is here as well. It's a fat target, putting it into the D rank. It comes with two flavors of beams a primary quad cannon and a secondary phonon maser. Don't get your hopes up about the latter, it fires fast and it doesn't hit as hard as you'd want it to. On the note of large and sluggish, that's pretty much an apt description of the claws Zok uses for its melee attacks. Its super attack, however, makes all eight torso mounted cannons fire out a beam of light, as the machine spins around like Wing Zero in that one episode of Gundam Wing. This one can be yours for the low low price of 33,000 after clearing the C stage on the Xeon side and having purchased the Neck Guy. This unlock requirement is shared with the Juagu, the Agu Guy, the Zogok, and the Ag. The MSM-04G Juagu resides in the D-rank, with its finger missiles, which occupy the primary slot, and chest mounted beams in the secondary slot. Its wacky looking hands of the machine can also be used for melee, and the super attack is a simple set of salvos. It comes at a cost of 33,600 and gets unlocked alongside the Zog. MSM-04N Agu Guy is another D-rank, and justifiably so, given its bare bones loadout of head mounted machine guns as a primary, a flash attack secondary, and its long whip like heat rods. If you want even more whipping to take place, well, the super attack does the trick. You can get one for 34,000 once it becomes available in the store with the Zog. Then there's the Zogok. Also a D rank unit, but this time with boomerangs. Those are its primary weapon, while the cutters within its abdomen are its secondary. The former stuns and pierces enemies, and the throw direction can be modified by movement inputs. Oh, and it gets extending limbs that make its own punches look pretty neat. The super attack of the Zogok has it throw all 10 boomerangs it has in a wide arc. The price tag for it is 33,900 and the unlock condition for the Zogok is shared with the Zog. EMS-05 Egg sports a beam torch as its primary with a secondary missile launcher. The latter is fully automatic and the drill hands are a given. Its somewhat weak ranged attacks and questionable turn speed place it in the D rank. The AG has a very cartoonish super attack where its drills grow in size and the machine itself makes a very flashy drilling motion. 34,000 is the price and it pops up in the store around the same time the Zog does. Now for the Rigdom and its variants. There's four in the 0079 Xeon roster. With the exception of Rigdom's Y in colony colors, all of these are space exclusive. The standard issue MS09R Rigdom is just a space worthy DOM, which plays like a DOM, has the same weapons as the DOM, is a D-rank like the DOM, and is pretty much a DOM in all but name. And yes, it also has the jet stream attack. Not much to be said about this one, aside from it going for 38,600 in the shop after using the DOM 5 times. Shars Rigdom from the Mobile Suit Gundam novel comes with two bazookas instead of one, with one of them being a beam bazooka and replacing the Zaku machine gun of the Rigdom. The scattering beam and the heat saber are retained. Its specs place it neatly into the B rank and its super attack pretty much consists of the beam bazooka producing the usual high output death beam. It can be yours for 72,800 and can be unlocked via research plans. Another higher end rigdom is the one piloted by Anavil Gato, the Nightmare of Solomon. The loadout of the Gato custom rigdom is identical to the standard rigdom, albeit with better stats. A distinguishing feature of it is the super attack which consists of a high damage slash attack with the same animation as the super attack on the Gundam. It's a B rank that goes for 70,000 in the store once you finish its research plan. There's also a green flavor of Rigdom, the Rigdom's Y in colony colors. Unlike its 083 Rigdom's Y counterpart, it's a ground only unit and it's not a C rank, with the machine in question being stuck in D rank instead. On the upside, the Giant Bazooka 2 the green Rigdom carries gets a Sturmfaust alongside it as a secondary source of projectiles. 
Its other primary weapons are the late war 19mm machine gun and a smoke grenade launched from the former. The secondary is the trademark Dom Scatterbeam, and I don't need to mention the proprietary heat saber taking up the spot for melee. Its super attack is a combo of a roundhouse kick and a downward slash. This one's priced at 44800 and can be bought once you've completed the war in the pocket stage on both the EFF and the Zeon side, while having used the Rick Dom five times. The mobile suit of the filthy flicker of vases, the Gyan, is a C-rank like the Gelgoog. Its ranged armaments are the primary needle missiles and secondary hide bomb space mines, both being optimized for flushing out and suppressing enemy units as opposed to shredding their armor. That's what the beam saber of the Gyan is for. It's much better in one-on-one -on -one combat as opposed to engaging multiple targets due to how ill-equipped the Gyan is for ranged combat. A flurry of stabs is the machine's super attack. By clearing the Solomon stage on the Zeon side or using the adds and free times, you can unlock it with the Gyan itself being priced at 67,200. On to the Gelgoog stem. There's 9. Mass Production Type, Commander Type, Shar Custom, Gato Custom, Von Kaspen Custom, Shin Matsunaga's High Mobility Type, Johnny Ryden's High Mobility Type, the Jaeger and the Gelgook Cannon, with their rating going from C on the low end all the way up to A and B ranks. The MS-14A Gelgook Mass Production Type is the quintessential late war Zeon Grunt and a respectable C rank. With a solid beam rifle and a Zaku machine gun as its primaries, this one is fairly versatile. Its secondary is the hand grenade, while the machine's beam Naginata does its job up close. The Gelgoog's super attack enhances the Naginata's size cartoonishly, blending the surrounding enemies. You can get one after clearing the Salmon stage on the Zeon side for the price of 75,600. Gelgoog commander type is a bit of a step up from the standard Gelgoog, with the Zaku machine gun being replaced with a powered down version of the Gelgoog Jaeger's machine gun. And more grenades. That's always good. Its super attack also gets an upgrade, having the Gelgook commander type dual wield its primary weapons and shower the enemy with beams. After free sorties with the standard Gelgook, it'll be available for 78,400. This one's still a C rank. Char's Gelgook is the only A rank of the Gelgook group with three impressive specs. Beam rifle, giant bazooka, hand grenades, naginata, a pretty similar loadout to the standard Gelgook with an explosive alternative to the machine gun. As its super attack, Char's Gelgoog tosses a giant version of the Naginata like a boomerang. The machine is obtainable via research and costs around 110,000 or so. The blue Gelgoog, which Anavel Gato used, is here as a B rank and carries a bigger meter beam rifle, alongside the giant bazooka and beam Naginata of Char's Gelgoog. As for the secondary, watch those wrist rockets. Yeah, I have no clue why it has an arm-mounted grenade launcher, but I'm not complaining. As you might have guessed, given that it has a big-ass beam rifle, it has a death beam for a super attack. This is another unit you can get through the research plans, and you can buy one for 89,600. Hailing from MS Igloo, Herbert von Kaspen gets a Gelgoog as well. This one is a somewhat barebone C rank, which is more of a support unit with multiple gimmicks. For one, you don't get to block normally. The Kaspen Gelgoog T poses instead. Your only weapons are the standard Gelgoog rifle primary and the beam Naginata melee weapon. Holding down your secondary weapon lets you charge up your SP gauge. Which, by the way, you can charge regardless of what you do, with the sole exception of shooting and blocking. Its super attack buffs you and your teammates for a while. It may be lacking in some areas, but its ability to generate stack of SP is not to be underestimated. 84,000 is the price tag for it, and the research plan is a way to unlock it. Now for the two high mobility Gelgoogs. Both are B ranks and can be obtained by the research plan feature. The duo comes in two flavors. Shin Matsunaga White and Johnny Raiden Red. Shin Matsunaga's high mobility type comes with two primary weapons, the Gelgoog rifle and the high mobility Gelgoog's very own bullpup rocket launcher. Somehow, it also uses the Gelgoog Marine's arm-mounted 110mm machine cannon as a secondary. Its super attack is listed as a combo, which basically amounts to the Gelgoog doing the Naginata spin from the original show, except that the Naginata becomes huge. You can get it for 86,800 in the store. The MS-14B Gelgoog High Mobility Type Johnny Raiden Custom shares its loadout with Shin's machine. It doesn't differ too much from its counterpart, except for minute stat differences. The paint job and a slightly lower tuning point cap. Another thing that sets it apart is the super attack, which has Johnny's machine float around in a pattern as it shoots both of its handheld weapons in a rather expedient manner. It costs 86,800. Then there's the Gelgoog Jaeger from the WAT War in the Pocket OVA. Unlocking this one requires you to own a long-range scope, Shin Matsunaga's Gelgoog, and to use the Gelgoog Commander type five times. This one goes for 95,200. Its specs are fairly solid for a B-rank Gelgoog, but as far as armaments go, 
the Jaeger gets a decent amount of variety. Its primaries consist of its proprietary beam machine gun and the same weapon again but in sniping mode. A beam spot gun will be your weapon of choice for the secondary slot with a beam saber for melee. For its super attack, the Jaeger's beam machine gun produces a yellow death beam. Next up is the MS-14C Gelguk cannon from MSV. The secondary slot is taken by the eponymous cannon, while the primaries are the Gelguk beam rifle and its missiles. Naginata is there for melee. After getting the research plan for it done, you can get it for 98,000. As expected, the super attack it has is a barrage, using all three of its guns. Another B rank. Another MSV Model Y that you can get via research is the high mobility Psycho Muzaku test type. This one is a space only C rank and a pretty fast one at that. Its right hand is a primary weapon, while its left hand is a secondary that detaches, attacking and moving independently of the Zaku itself. You get generic hand motions for melee. It also lets you activate its thruster mode, which is more or less a flight mode for space mobile suits. This unit's super attack detaches both its arms, having them bombard the enemy with beams. It can be yours for 78,400. If you want more firepower from your space-only legless Psychomu robot, the Zeong is right there, being a respectable B-rank. Your primaries are the beam cannons in the head and torso, while your secondary attack lets the hands loose for all range beam bombardment. Hands remain in the melee slot as well, and the melee animation while the arms are out is pretty funny to look at. Just like the Psycho Test Zaku high mobility type, it has access to the thrust mode, on top of a beam barrage super attack, albeit with more beams. This one can be bought for 229,000 once you sort it with Char 5 times and clear the A Bawaku stage on the Zeon side. Belt them legs. It's 80% complete, but you'll barely even notice. The legs are just for show. Or maybe they ain't. By getting its research plan done, you can get the perfect Zeong, which does in fact have legs. This is an A-rank variant of the Zeong, which has feet and therefore can be deployed on the ground. Stat-wise, it is an upgrade over the original MSN02, though its weapons are mostly unchanged, with the exception of kicks being added to the melee moveset. As its super attack, it pulls out the large sword it apparently comes with and goes for an equally sizable swipe. The perfect Zeong costs 257,000. On the opposite side of the spectrum, the lightweight yet heavily armed MS-18E Camphor is a speedy B-rank combatant with a somewhat brittle armor. While devoid of Vulcans, the machine comes with all you would ever want out of a camper. Shotgun! Check. Rocket launcher! Double check. Sturmforce? Another double check. Secondary chain mines? You betcha. It also comes with a generic yellow beam saber for melee. The super attack for this one has it use all of its ranged weapons except for the aforementioned Vulcans. You can get a camper for 81,200 once you've cleared the war in the pocket stage on the Zeon side or bought Bernie Wiseman as a pilot. Nimbus Shirtson of the Blue Destiny fame gets two units here, with the first one being the Blue Destiny Unit 2. As stated in the previous Gun Assault Survive roster overview, these are ordered by how they show up in the menus. Anyways, the BD-2 is a B-rank, and for the most part it is very similar to its BD-3 sister unit, save for some mirror stat differences and melee animations. The trio of beam rifle, chest missiles, and chest vulcans is still there. Just like the BD-3, BD-1 and the Afrit Kai, it has the exam system as its super attack, and speaking of the Afrit Kai, by using that one five times, you can unlock the BD-3 in the store. The price tag for it is 72,800. Ifrit Kai, the second nimble Nimbus unit is a C rank, and a pretty good one at that. While not too heavily armored, and packing only wrist grenades and foot missiles for ranged combat, the specs overall are fairly solid. Not to mention the strong multi-head combos, or the exam system super attack. To unlock one, you have to get three things done. Clear the stage after the Solomon on the Zeon side, use the Guff five times, and use the Dom five times. Then you'll just have to shell out 53,200 in the store to get it. Now for the mobile armors, because lord knows there's like a dozen or so there. Adzam, D-rank, flies around, primary shoots beams, secondary is a shock cage. On one hand, the cannons do a lot of damage, but the angle correction on these is very inconsistent, so you'll have to either time your shots or manually turn the Adzam. The generic mobile armor ram attack doesn't do much, but the super attack where the damn thing spins and fires all over the place at least looks flashy. It can be unlocked by owning 5 or more Xeon 0079 mobile suits and having beaten the Odessa stage. It costs 145,600 in the store. The sole underwater mobile armor, the Grabro, is a D-rank, which requires you to clear the 0079 C stage on both sides. It can only be deployed on purely underwater maps. It has two types of missiles, with the front shooting ones being in the primary slot, and the upwards going ones being a secondary. You get a pair of huge claws to flail around and hit things with. 
The Grabro is more optimized for hit and runs and the super attack has its spin like an oversized drill bit, laying waste to nearby foes. It can be bought for 146,800. MA05 Big Row is a C rank, sporting an oversized laser pointer as its primary, a set of secondary missiles and two huge claws for grabbing things. Its super attack unleashes an even bigger laser pointer, though this time around the mobile armor is stuck in place as it fires, letting you steer the beam better. To get Toquan's unit of choice, you'll have to clear the stage after Solomon on the Xeon side, on 6 or more 0079 mobile suits and go to the store afterwards to pick it up for 228,000. The MA-04X Zacrello from the MSG episode right after that is there too. It has a scattering beam spit alongside secondary missiles. Not to mention the heat nadas, which make it useful for lawn mowing too. Speaking of lawn mowing, the Zacrello's super attack makes its blades bigger and has the unit flail them around spastically. This unit can be obtained for the low low price of 203,800 after having used the big row 5 times. Want some more psycho mu on top? Well, MAN03 Brow Bro does somewhat fulfill that niche. It's an almost questionably bare bones B rank mobile armor with a single ranged weapon, i.e. the mega particle guns. The secondary weapon deploys and repositions the cannons and you can also hold that input to retract them. Brow Bro's super attack is, for obvious reasons, a barrage of beams courtesy of the wired mega particle guns. It has a standard mobile armor ramming attack. To get this one, you'll have to clear the Abaoku stage and either own a Zacrello or a Psychomu amplifier part. Regardless, it'll cost you 224,000. By buying the Brow Bro or Lala soon, you can get the latter's man 8 Elmif. This one comes with pretty much everything you'd expect it to have. While the Elmif doesn't get a lot of ammo for its weapons, you're still getting a decent amount of damage output via its two beam cannons, the secondary psycho mu bits, and thanks to its decent speed, you can even get some mileage out of its ramming move. It's an A rank. For its super attack, it spams beams from its bits, kinda like the Cubalay does as a part of its super attack, but slightly weaker. It's priced at 224,000. Oh hey, exam! Yep, that one's there too. Costing 284,000, this absolute unit can be unlocked via buying Dozo Zabi and owning more than 7 Xeon 0079 mobile suits. Its primaries are the beam cannons, both the big one and the cluster of small ones. Foot rockets are the big Zam secondary, with its feet being used for melee as well. Just like the big row, it fires its big beam with big damage and you get to steer it around when using its super attack. While being a sizable target, the sizable Zam gets an equally sizable eye field that provides some defense from incoming beam fire. I have no clue what the plural form of the Absolus is, but there's three of these things. Absolus 1 is a flying brick that can throw sonic booms both ahead and downwards. While its melee is the generic ramming move, the super attack doubles down on the sonic booms. It's a C rank, since this is just the first one. Once you sortie with Aina Sahalin, it pops up in the store for 223,000. Absolus 2, the sequel, does retain its secondary sonic boom, though this time around it has a big beam cannon as its primary. The super attack reflects the change by making the cannon fire a steerable death beam. This one's a B rank, which you can get by playing as Aina Sahalin 5 times as well as owning the first Absolus. There isn't much to be said about this one past that aside from it being a B rank and costing 266,000. The Absolus 3 Shiro Strikes Back featuring Dante from Devil May Cry is an A rank now. A transformable one which lets you switch between a tripod walker, it has the HG Wells estate knocking on your door for royalties, or the folded mode which is pretty much just the absolute but widescreen. In the walker mode, you can use the long feet as melee, the secondary beam sweep, alongside the primary big beam and scatter beams. In the folded mode, all you get is the big beam and ramming. The price tag for this one also increased in size, going up to 315,000 in the store. The igloo units make a return, containing four largely eccentric units. The Jormungand cannon is one of the biggest units in the game, making things like the Big Zam, the Xe Gundam, and the like seem reasonably sized in comparison. The catch is, it's not good. After using the Zuda 5 times, for a price of 140,000, you're getting a single shot beam cannon, which takes long to recharge, with your secondary weapon input making the recharge slightly less unbearable. The cannon itself is almost unbearably slow, and it doesn't really do the whole aiming thing properly, so you're essentially stuck with nothing but a cumbersome ram attack before the Jormungian decides you can fire again. The super attack for this one is a large powerful shot that would be able to shred a ship, but at the end of the day it doesn't really stop the Jormungand from being more of a joke unit and deservedly ending up as a D-rank. Zagak Rocket Edition, also known as the MSM-07DI Zagak, is here too, being deployable in both space and on the ground. There's three primaries on this one, representing its three weapon containers, the big missiles, the small missiles and the scatter beam. 
which hoses down multiple enemies at a time. The C-Rank Zagok variant also sports a spammable beam gun as a secondary, which always comes in handy. The ramming attack on it is somewhat serviceable. Zagok's super attack pretty much just fires from all three weapon containers. It costs 98,800 and you can unlock it via research. Argo, the flying yellow barrel, can be bought for 33,600 after having cleared the second Dexter stage and having 10 or more Xeon 0079 mob suits in your possession. It's a D-rank with very flimsy armor, the trio of standard issue Zaku weapons as primaries, i.e. Zaku machine gun, Zaku bazooka and a stern force, with a rocket pod for a secondary. All in all, it's like a faster ball with Zaku weapons and a goofy looking melee attack. For its super attack, it fires all of its weapons. Simple as. It also comes with a thruster mode, allowing for swifter flybys at the expense of turning speed. The Colossal Big Rang is an A rank, and pretty much an oversized garage build version of the Big Row. Both the Big Beam and missiles are in the primary slots, alongside a pair of machine guns. For its secondary, it gets a smoke screen and multiple Argos that watch your back. Contrary to what you might assume, this one's got absolutely busted melee hitboxes. The super attack on this one has it fire both machine guns and rockets. Not too flashy, but it gets the job done, I suppose. Big rank can be unlocked via research plant and goes for 431,000 in the store. Magella Attack Tank is a fairly interesting D-rank unit, which one can get for 16,800 from the shop, with the unit being available from the very start. It has a main cannon and a machine gun as its primary and secondary respectively. The latter of the two lets you move as you fire, allowing you to drift. The Magella Tank can also detach its turret and fly around just like it does in the show. Its melee attacks are just as cartoonish as the ones the Type 61 main battle tank has, and its super attack has the turret fly out and bombard nearby enemies. Demazir Sonin's very own Hadolfer is listed as a C rank. It can transform and sports six types of cannon shells, three for each mode in the primary slot, and two secondaries, smoke bombs in the tank mode, and a pair of machine guns in its mobile mode. The melee attacks in both modes are very impractical with their range and speed. Depending on what mode you're in, the cannon shot arcs are different with the mobile mode making them operate like conventional cannons, while the tank mode lets it fire at the enemies on the go with a preset arc. With the super attack that it has, the Hadolfer fires assorted rounds with the last shot being a massive area of effect warhead. It can be yours for 30,800 once you beat the first extra stage and own 12 or more 0079 mobile suits. And that should be all the 0079 Xeon units accounted for. All 70 of them. Here's a chart for the related research plans. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe. And if you ever feel so inclined, there's ways to subsidize my shenanigans in the description. I'll get you a name in the credits, early access to my long-form stuff, and access to my proprietary server. Anywho, brief shilling segment over, take care. Shirtlaid, signing out.